Selamat siang bapak-bapak dan ibu-ibu. Hari ini saya masak um, ayam sambal mata dari Bali. Welcome to another video. I hope you're doing absolutely great. Today we're going to make chicken sambal mata. Now sambal mata means sliced sambal. It's a very important sambal in Balinese cuisine. And this particular dish uh, has quickly become one of my favorites. Um, it also involves doing a lot of um, other preparations in Balinese cuisine. So we will start by making base genup, which is uh, basically a spice paste that we might use with um, chicken or pork. And this is an absolutely delicious paste. We'll talk about um, different options you might have when making it, things that you might add or might omit. Um, and then we'll marinate the chicken in that, and then we will um, uh, fry it, slice it, and uh, make basically a delicious um, salad out of the chicken and the sambal mata. Hope that you're ready for something absolutely extraordinary. So first we have a dry spice mixture. I will include the instructions in the comments. Basically, this is nutmeg, cloves, white pepper, black pepper, and coriander. And they've been basically roasted together and then pulverized, for example, in an electric uh, chopping machine or an ulek ulek. And today, I'm not going to use my ulek ulek because um, I want to show you how to do it. Uh, and chances are you don't have one. But ulek uleks are great. Um, the second thing we'll make is the base skin up which is uh, basically this, pa this stuff, plus ginger, turmeric, um, lemongrass, uh, garlic, shallots, and normally you'd use candle nuts, but uh, I couldn't find uh, any candle nuts on short notice, so I'm using Brazil nuts instead, which are the closest thing you can easily get um, instead, of, uh, instead of candle nuts. Um, and we'll make a paste out of this. The sambal mata, is going to have um, these uh, shallots, um, lemongrass, chili pepper, and I'm going to add a small bit of a really spicy chili to make it spicier, and some lemon, uh, sorry, some lime leaves. Um, and those are the basic ingredients there. The Last really important ingredient is this, which is a mixture of about 50% um, uh, coconut oil and about 50% vegetable oil. And the reason for mixing them is because um, Balinese um, uh, coconut oil is not quite as strong in flavor as the extra virgin um, oil you can get here. And uh, on top of that, when it's a little chilly, the coconut milk, the coconut oil will congeal, and uh, mixing it prevents that. I want to also show off my knife. Now, uh, I want to show off this knife a bit. I bought this knife in Bali. It's uh, it weighs about five hundred grams or one uh, pound, approximately a little more than one pound. Um, the blade is about five millimeters thick. Um, it's uh, asymmetric, so uh, it's definitely a right-handed knife. Unfortunately, I'm left-handed, but uh, I just tr tilted a little bit when I cut it with it, and it's absolutely great. Um, this knife is absolutely razor sharp. Um, it's also heavy. You could you could you could um, uh, chop through bones with it. You can um, you can also slice garlic or um, or shallots really thin. So uh, this is what I'm going to use. Um, it's an absolutely amazing knife. Um, I will see if I can um, find any sources and paste them in the comments. The final ingredients are chicken, uh, chicken thigh and a um, tomato. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, bone the chicken thigh. And then I'll come back once the chicken thigh is boned and we'll go ahead and start uh, making the uh, paste. Now, the first step in making the base genup is to take all these ingredients and chop them a bit. So I'm going to start with the Brazil nuts. And these are probably the hardest things in this group to chop. 
And they don't need to be chopped that fine. You just need to break them up a little bit because otherwise they're going to be a little bit problematic. I think that'll be good. Um, then let's go with the ginger. And then there's really uh, ginger, uh, the ginger and the turmeric, you're not going to get like really fine, that's fine. We don't really need to finely chop everything, although maybe it's good to finely chop the lemongrass. Um, but uh, I think next I'm going to go for the uh, shallots. Um, but the big thing is um, they need to be chopped enough that when they go into the electric grinder or the um, uh, or the um, or, or or the mortar and pestle that that, that they're going that they're going to be manageable and uh, like if you don't chop the Brazil nuts basically what ends up with what you end up with are these large chunks of stuff that are difficult to get rid of. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish chopping everything here. Um, there's really not that much to see with the knife at this stage. Um, that's more interesting when we go into the sambal mata. So I have the mixed oil in the wok and I realized I cut too much lemongrass so I took some out. Um, I'm now going to stir fry everything in the wok until it softens quite a lot. So this will get stir-fried with the oil and then then basically as this becomes uh, soft we will put it into an electric grinder and grind it. Uh, you could also use an ulek ulek such as I have but uh, since that makes things a little bit less accessible, I decided I would show people doing this in an electric, uh, an electric chopper today. Now, while we are cooking this, it's worth noting that this has become a little bit more yellow. That's because of the turmeric here. Um, there's a very similar, um, or there's a lot of similarities between Indian cooking and Balinese cooking, except there's also one massive difference, which is that Indian cooking uses mostly dried spices, while Balinese cooking uses mostly fresh seasonings. So, um, so a lot of the spice compositions are similar in some regards, and a lot of the ingredients are similar, but the, uh, but the, but the overall characteristic is very different, um, in part because of the reliance on fresh ingredients instead of purely dried ingredients. Now, you can, you can make this paste in a blender also, not just, a, not just a, like an electric chopper like I'll be using. Um, but the, uh, the issue there is you have to add more oil so that you have some liquid for the blender to work with. And then, of course, all of the standard concerns with working with uh, hot liquids in a blender apply. Now, this is starting to, um, to soften a bit. I'm going to let it cook for another minute or two, and then I'll take it off the heat. And as soon as it's safe to put in the, um, in the chopper, I will do that. Yeah, this is starting to look much, much softer. Now this base ganap is also what they put on uh, Bobby Gooling, which is a uh, suckling pig. Um, so you can actually, instead of just using it as a marinade, you can actually use it as a condiment. Uh, so this is, this is one really, really, really awesome and versatile sp uh, spice paste. Ooh, that's smelling really good. Okay, I think I've, I think this is done. I'm going to take it off here. One word of warning here. Uh, this mixture is likely to stain anything it comes in contact with. So, um, like here, uh, make sure that you clean up your counters. Uh, 
really fast. Otherwise, um, you will have stains. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and load this up and get ready. And here we're grinding. Once I get this into a paste, I'll be right back. Okay, so now we have something that's now approximating a paste. I'm gonna add maybe close to a tablespoon of this. And since I'm gonna use this as a marinade, I'm going to add salt. If I was putting this on Bobby Gooling, I probably wouldn't add the salt here. If I was making a mixed batch, I would probably add the salt later. Then I'm gonna mix it up. And here we have our base skin up spice paste. The next step is to smear this on the outside of the uh, boneless, skinless um, chicken. And also on the inside here. Um, so there we go. And this is then gonna be let sit for a little while while these flavors seep into the chicken. So now that it's been a while and marinating, um, I am going to start cooking the chicken. In my wok, I'm gonna add a bit of this blended oil. And I'm gonna let that heat up. And while it's heating up, I'm going to start uh, preparing the tomato and the sambal mata. Mm. So first for the sambal mata, and this is where you'll get to see the, this knife really shine. Um, I'm gonna start by slicing very thin um, the shallots and the lemongrass. So I'm gonna start with three shallots. Maybe I need a little more. And I decided to add, uh, I decided to add a small clove of garlic also. So here we go. You can see, you really want, especially since this is gonna be a raw sambal, you want this as thin as possible. And we have it nice and thin here. And so uh, I'm going to do the same with this garlic really fast. Um, and then the lemongrass. Take the skin on the outside off just to make it easier to cut. And then normally in Balinese cooking, you'll only use the white part. But uh, in this case, I'm gonna use the whole thing because I'm being a bit frugal here. And like the shallots, you really need to get these really, really thin. The reason being, um, lemongrass is pretty tough. And if you don't get it really thin, same with our chili peppers. And uh, I'll be back when I'm done with this and we'll go on to the lime leaves. Now that the oil is hot, I'm going to add the chicken and let that start cooking. <clears throat> and all the while, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish making the sambal mata. Now, one thing about the uh, base up that I should have mentioned is that you can also add the ch you can also add chili peppers to that, and I just didn't today. Um, I'm just putting them kind of fresh in the um, in the sambal mata, 
but you could also add chili peppers to the base gamut also. So now for the lime leaves. And I think in this case, I'm only gonna use maybe two of them. Ooh, that chicken is smelling really good. Uh, Devein them. And then basically slice them into very, very, very thin pieces. And some people, myself included, uh, like to chop them a little bit more at this stage, just because that way that's a little bit more pleasant to eat texture-wise. So I'm going to take this, add them in, and here I have the basic sambal masa. Um, and from here I'm going to add a bit of oil, and I'm just going to squeeze it up with my hands like this. Knead it together to kind of bruise the bruise everything unless the flavors come in. And here we have it. Now for the uh, tomatoes, uh, there's an important trick here, and that's that we're only going to use the outer wall of the tomato here. So uh, basically, um, cut off here, uh, slide this off and then just slice these like this and that's because this area in here is pretty juicy and you don't want all the juices coming into your dish so here i have the tomato sliced and now i'm going to just slice the meat um and yeah that looks good And uh, I like to use the thigh. Some people like to use the uh, breast for this, but uh, thigh is a little bit uh, less dry. And so we're just going to cut it a little bit like this. Then um, we will put it over here um, and we'll mix it with some sambal mata, a nice handful. Maybe a little more. And then I'll come back to plate it. <clears throat> so for plating, I'm just going to grab it. I'm going to put it, uh, I'm basically going to put stacks of it together with my hands on top of each other. So that it makes kind of a haystack, if you will. And if it starts to fall apart, we just kind of squeeze it together and we'll end up with uh, some of the smaller pieces like the sambal mata on the very top. Next, I'll come back with a garnish and from there we'll be ready to eat. So with this, I'm just going to sprinkle very little bit. You could use parsley, celery leaves, but I'm also going to get, you know, if I'm going to sprinkle like this, I tend to sprinkle around the plate also because it tends to frame the dish a little bit. And so I'll do that. And then I will just set this um, right on the top here like this. And then here we have I am Sambo Mata. And now for the taste test. This is absolutely delicious. Absolutely, absolutely delicious. You guys have to try this. This is really, really good. It's just immediately one of my favorite um, sort of, um, you know, um, lukewarm, sort of not hot summer dishes, not very heavy, full of flavor, just absolutely delicious. Anyway, 